Hello everyone, this is Robert. Lately I've been doing a lot more with 3D printing. If you've been following my channel recently, you can see that I'm pretty much trying to put a 3D printed object into every single thing that I'm making lately. And because of this, I've been getting a lot of questions about my 3D printing setup, what printers I use, what filament I use, things like that. So I want to kind of cover a lot of that in this video and show you my 3D printing setup. I'm here in my office because behind me in the closet is my 3D printing setup. So let's go take a look at my 3D printing closet. Ta-da! So here is my closet. As you can see over here, I have a Prusa i3 Mark III S, and then I also have a Prusa Mini over there. I just pretty recently got the Mini, and it is fantastic to have dual printers. You can have one running one filament, one running the other. You can do same parts at the same time, or you can work on one project and then, you know, prototype something else. So it's really nice having the dual redundant printers. I really like that. Going back, I kind of maybe wish I had two i3 Mark III S's, but I think the Mini is perfectly fine. I'll talk about that later. The shelving system is, I think, Algot from IKEA. They don't sell this anymore, but I think there's a new version of it or something like that. Just check IKEA's website. But it's really nice because it allows me to get these large openings, and then I can have a smaller one over there for the Mini. So it's really nice having that organization. My printers are here. You can see I've got the dehydrator back in the corner and then against this wall, all the way up this wall is where I have all my filament storage and I'll get into that next. But this is the general setup that I have. And since this is inside a closet, there's a couple things to talk about. I do have a plug, which you can see over there behind the um, Prusa Mini, that was actually a plug that I brought in from the bathroom. There's a bathroom behind this wall, so I just tied into that and then brought it inside here, and there's no issue with um, being overloaded or anything like that. Additionally, because this is in a closet, I need to add some additional light. So I have these LED strips underneath this shelf and underneath this shelf, and there's a switch hidden underneath this beam, so I can just hit the button and this thing is nice and bright. So my office is generally a little bit more moodier in the evening so I can turn on this light and I can see exactly what I'm doing inside the closet, which is awesome. So let's look at the uh, filament storage. So here is my filament storage solution. As you can see, I have four levels of it running up and down the um, side wall. The um, Prusa i3 Mark III S is sitting right here. So this is just against that wall. And there's enough space for me to kind of get in and grab the filament. It has about, I think, nine or 10 wide. So there's about 40 rolls of filament maybe in total here. And the um, storage system is really simple. It's just these little 3D printed brackets. You can see one right there. And it just has a little cup in it that holds a piece of PVC pipe. Nice and simple. So I just screw that plate against the wall, put down the pipe, and it just forms just a nice little shelf. There's really nothing else to it. It just rests against that back wall. And yeah, that's about all there is to it. I've got my PLAs down here and here. These are just kind of my general purpose PLAs. I've got all my kind of exotic um, nylon, carbon fibers, um, fiberglass, all that stuff here. And then up top is just kind of, um, I guess, the aesthetic pretty stuff like metallics, wood, and all that stuff that I don't use as much. And I think I can add one more up top and probably a couple more down here on the bottom. So it gives me a pretty substantial amount of filament storage. Now, I don't do any kind of drying or anything like that on the storage because, well, it's Colorado, the humidity is relatively low, and then I have the um, dehydrator over there. So yeah, I just kind of store them like that. And whenever possible, I do keep them inside the bags, of course. So yeah, that is my filament storage. So now I want to talk a little bit more about the printers specifically. And before I go into this, I want to make it known that I am not sponsored by Prusa in any way. I bought both of these printers with my own money. They are not aware I'm making this video, all of that good stuff. So now that we have that all out of the way, if you have the money and you can buy the Prusa i3 Mark III S and you're looking for a 3D printer, just, just get it. Don't look for anything else, just get this. I've owned several 3D printers over the years and this is the first one that really makes me enjoy 3D printing. 
it's the first one that just does what it's supposed to do. I can just load a file on it, click a button, and just go off and do something else, and I know that it's going to print. I don't think I've yet had a failure on either of these machines. They're just fantastic, and I'm not really going to go into all the details on why, because it'd be a really long video, and I think there's a lot of information out there. What I just kind of want to convey to you is for someone that has a CNC router, a CNC milling machine, a table saw, and everything else, it is just really refreshing to not have yet another tool that you have to maintain and fiddle with constantly. The i3 Mark III S is just a set and forget printer, so enough about that. For beginners, a couple little things that you should know. I really, really enjoy these magnetic build plates. Um, I see so many people messing with, you know, different hairsprays and glues and um, all sorts of just techniques to get your prints to stick. I have both the textured and the non-textured, um, the smooth surface um, plates here. And between these two, if you do the right techniques, I have no issue whatsoever getting everything to stick just fine. Even, you know, nylons, ABSs, things like that. My trick is to take these um, surfaces, fully clean them, Dawn dish soap, then isopropyl alcohol, then Dawn dish soap again, then another round of isopropyl alcohol. Don't touch it, as I'm doing right now. And then I just give it like one or two quick coats of the, uh, what was it, the school glue, you know, just this kind of stuff. Give it two quick coats of that. And then you can print on this thing for like a good solid month before you have to do anything with it. And you can see I've got, you know, a lot of prints that I have done on this surface. And if you do that, your prints are going to stick pretty much every single time as long as you have the GZ height adjusted properly. And I do that on both of the build plates for both of my printers. I use the textured for almost everything, but if I'm doing something with really fine details or something that's really small, I will switch over to the smooth, which hold like crazy, sometimes a little bit too much. So I only use these if I have something that has really tiny, fine details. But as you see, you got to keep fingerprints in mind. So you got to really clean these. I just find that adding the glue later adds an extra additional level of adhesion, and it also blocks and prevents a lot of that fingerprints and grease from getting on it. So now that I've had both of these printers for well over six months, and I've got a lot of use out of them, I think I can finally answer which one is better. And I've done this segment right here like a dozen or more times, and I just keep messing it up. And I think I'm gonna keep it a lot simpler. If you can afford the Mark III S, go with it. If maybe you just can't justify that expense and you don't need the extra build volume, go with the Mini. Given the exact same filament, a relatively simple model like and I don't mean relatively simple, but I mean, you know, let's not do anything really complicated. If you're just doing a model that you know is going to print well and use the same filament and the same print settings between these two, you're going to be hard pressed to find a difference. This will print in the exact same quality as the Mark III S will do. The only big difference is the build volume. If we look at these two side by side, you can see that the Mark III S has a much bigger build volume. That is a known thing. We all know that that's the case. The Mini is just a little bit smaller, it's a little bit slower, it's a little bit more noisy, and dealing with the Bowden tube is just a little bit more annoying. But other than that, you will generally get the same quality out of both machines if you know what you're doing and you're printing a model that is set up for success. So is there any real benefit to printing inside a closet? Absolutely. Printing inside a nice enclosed space inside your temperature controlled home is highly beneficial for 3D printing. A lot of times you will see parts that will lift up on the edge, you'll get a lot of warping, deformation, you might even get layer separation, things like that. From my experience, most of those issues happen because of poor temperature regulation. Not necessarily from the printers themselves, but just from drafts and other things around in the room. I used to print out in my workshop and I always had an issue with a draft. You know, the I have a mini split out there for temperature control and sometimes I'll just turn it off if I'm not going to be in there. And just that temperature fluctuation and also um, that's where we let our dogs outside and so you open the door and a big draft comes through and all of those issues just happen when you don't have temperature control. So printing inside a closet like this, if you keep the door closed and you just print and go, it will help keep that temperature nice and steady and you'll have a lot less issues with adhering to the bed, warping and all those other issues that you get when you're just changing the temperature of the print constantly. 
So I think the last thing that I wanted to talk about about my setup that's pretty critical is Octoprint. Octoprint is quite simply a piece of software that's free that you load onto a Raspberry Pi, you connect your printer into USB into the Raspberry Pi, and then you connect the Raspberry Pi to your network. Then you just log into the Raspberry Pi with an IP address on your local network, and then you can communicate and talk, load files, view the progress of the prints, things like that. It is a really amazing tool. If you have a 3D printer, you should get it. Um, highly recommend it. The reason I mention it is in this closet, most of the time I have those doors closed and I wanna check on the print. I don't get a lot of failed prints and not like, you know, humble bragging here or anything, but I very rarely get a print that just flat out fails. So most of the time what I'm doing is I'm logging in and checking progress. I'm seeing what layer it's on. Maybe I'll speed up the print, slow it down, check temperatures, things like that. I'm just kind of monitoring the print to see where it's at in the progress. You can add a webcam, things like that but I have yet to find a webcam setup that I can actually look at the printer and see if it's doing well in terms of quality. You can view catastrophic issues like, you know, completely lifting off the print bed or jammed filament, things like that. But if it has little um, blobs or little um, hairs or something like that, most of the time a webcam can't really cover that. So that is why I'm not running a webcam here. Obviously you can also use webcams for those really cool time-lapse footages. It's just kind of tedious and cumbersome for me to do. I just really don't like spending the extra time when I'm 3D printing because I tend to do a lot of prototypes, things like that. Also, I tend to not print when I'm not home and I'm only in the office, right? So if I'm in the office, I can just come over here and open the doors and take a look at it. I really don't like to print completely unattended. I'm not going to you know, leave a print and then just go off. So. I do tend to just look at the print if I want to visually look at it and then use Octoprint for checking status on, you know, where it's at in the layers. But highly recommend you check out Octoprint. I've got a link down below. You need a little bit of computer chops and a little bit of computer experience, um, especially with Raspberry Pi, to get it up and running. But if you're good at following directions, you should be totally fine setting that up. The only downside about Octoprint is it only works on one printer at a time. So if you have two printers, you need to have a separate Octoprint server for each printer, which is a bit of a bummer. And right now I only have the one. I only have it on the Mark 3S. I don't yet have one on the Mini, but I'm gonna have to build a separate server just for the Mini. The other cool thing about it is there's lots of plugins and lots of other little things that you can add to it. And I currently have it set up to control the power for my printers. So remotely I can turn them on and off. So if there's maybe some sort of an issue I can cut power and also I have it so at the end of a print it literally cuts power to the printer. I think after like 15 minutes of idle after the print is done it will actually cut off the power which is just a nice little safety feature. So yeah, go ahead and check out Octoprint if you're going to be obfuscating your printers in some way in a closet or enclosure or whatever. So I think that's about all I have to say about my 3D printer setup. I know I'm going to get a few comments from people saying that like, oh, you know, go check out the Ender 3 or check out the new Creality, whatever the hell the CR10 blah, blah, blah is of the day. You are more than welcome to make your own video talking about your suggestions and what you think is the best printer out there. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you can get the same quality of a Prusa out of this printer. Cool. Go ahead and make that video, compare the two, and do that on your own channel. Uh, this is my suggestion. This is what I use. I've owned several 3D printers over the years, and this is the first time I found something that's like, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how printers are supposed to operate and act. The tool chain is fantastic. I like going from SolidWorks directly into Prusa Slicer, directly with their predefined slicing settings, directly into the printer over Octoprint. It's fantastic, highly recommend it, and that's why I'm making this video. The Mark 3S at $1,000 definitely comes with a bit of a premium, and the Mini at about $400, $350, $400. They're not the cheapest printers out there, but I am a firm believer and you get what you pay for. And if I was gonna add a third printer, I would no question get another Mark III S. I just really like them and they work for what I want to do. So hopefully you got something out of this video. I know that when I switched my printers out of the workshop into the closet, I noticed a significant improvement in my print quality and just the workflow is a lot nicer since I'm already designing here in my office, being able to click that button, walk over and watch it start and be like, yep, that's starting, that's cool. I don't know, I really like it. Um, if you have a spare bedroom or something like that that has a closet that you're not using, eh, eh, maybe look into doing this on your own. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.